to start the crochet bee kit, we're gonna start by working on the wings. Here we're gonna do our simple slip knot to get it onto our hook. Then you're gonna insert your hook and then tighten the slip knot around it. You don't want it too tight, but a snug so it doesn't fall off. Next, we're gonna do our chains. Grab the working yarn and pull it through the loop. We're gonna do this twice. Now we have two chains, the one right by the hook and the one by the slip knot. We're gonna insert our hook into the slip knot. I pulled it a little tighter so I have tight stitches. And we're gonna do one single crochet. The first one might be a little difficult to get through, but that's okay. Now you're gonna do five more single crochets into the same hole that you just put the first single crochet in. If you need any tutorials on how to do the slip knot, chains, or single crochet, you can find that in the crochet guide. Now we have six. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six right at the bottom. We're gonna insert our stitch marker into the stitch that we just made. Those two top loops are what makes the stitch, so you can slide that all the way through both of them. Now we're going to start making our circle bigger. To do so, we're going to do increases, which is two single crochet into the same stitch. Here we insert the hook into the first stitch, pull it a little tight, and we're going to make one single crochet, and then another into the same hole. We're going to repeat this a total of six times, so at the end you'll have 12 stitches. There's one, and there's two, our first increase. Then you can continue that all the way around. Here we're finishing up the increase, and we're getting close to the stitch marker. So you're just going to slide it out, and then add your increase into that stitch, just like normal. We're going to do a quick count here to make sure we're still on track. We should have 12. We're gonna insert the stitch marker back into the last stitch that we made so we can keep track as we go through the round. For the next row, we're going to do an increase and then a single crochet, and that will be what we repeat around. So here's one single crochet, And then we're doing the increase right now. So that's our increase. And then the next stitch, you're gonna do one single crochet. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. At the end, you should have 18 stitches. The next row is going to be very similar. We're going to do an increase, and then you're going to single crochet into the next two stitches. So an increase, and then one, and then another one. You're going to repeat that all the way around. You can see we're starting to make our circle bigger and it's gonna be nice and flat, nice tight stitches, and you're gonna have a really cool bee wing soon. Now we're gonna do an increase and then single crochet into the next three stitches. 
cause our increase. Here's one, two, three. And you're gonna repeat that again all the way around. You will repeat that series six times. All right, now we have our wing. It's again, still very flat. We're counting the rows here to make sure we're still on track. Stitches look nice and tight. For the next one, we're going to single crochet in each of the stitches around. No increases or decreases, we're just gonna go around. This will start to make it curl up a little bit so it looks more like a B wing. Now you have B wing number one. We have our middle six stitches, then our increases, and then our increases around, and then our last row of single crochet. Now we're going to make a bit of a tail with the yarn, and then we're gonna cut it. And then you're gonna take your crochet hip and pull all the yarn all the way through so it doesn't slide out. You can tighten it a little bit, but as you can see, it shouldn't come out and it shouldn't come undone. Now, to weave in our ends for that middle, we're going to take the middle string and put it on our tapestry needle. And then we're going to stick it into the stitches of the wing. You want to make sure it's actually going in between things and it's not just sitting on top of it. This will make sure it is one, hidden, and as well as it doesn't come out and could structurally hurt it. Here I'm sticking it all the way down by the other tail because when we weave it in, we can use it for extra security. Now we have officially finished our B-Wing. Now you just need to make a second. Now for the body of the bean, we're going to start very similar to the beginning of the wing. You're going to make your slip knot, insert your hook, and then make two chains. You're going to do six single crochet into that single crochet right next to the slip knot. If you're unsure of how tight to make it, there's a swatch in your crochet kit that will help you see how tight the stitches should be. All right, now we have six stitches. Next, we're gonna do we're gonna add our stitch marker, and then we're going to do our six increases, so for a total of 12 stitches. It's okay if the first one's a little funky, you might have to pull it. We like them nice and tight, so sometimes it's a little hard to get our hook in the beginning. There's one single crochet, and then we're inserting into the same hole and doing a second single crochet. Then we're gonna repeat that all the way around. Because this is the beginning, we're gonna take a moment to count again. Make sure we have 12 stitches all the way around. going to do an increase and then a single crochet. Again, just like the beginning of the B-Wing. This is a method that is used for all circles and this creates an even increase all the way around. 
You can repeat that all the way around. Now we're going to do an increase and then two single crochets. If you would like to fast forward, we're going to be doing the same method all the way up to one increase, seven single crochet. In this video, we're going to stop the beginning of every row so you can see the increases, but you can go ahead and fast forward if you're feeling confident and you're following the pattern on the paper. This row is increase, and then three single crochet. Have their increase, this is one, two, and three. And if you're counting the stitches, you should be able to see the little bumps and how the increase looks a little different. Now here's our increase, and then one, two, three, four. Now we're doing an increase, one, two, three, four, five. Increase and five single crochet. And you'll repeat that six times around. By now you're probably getting this down and you're understanding the pattern that we're working with. The next row, as you might have guessed, is increase and then six single crochet. This is our last row of increasing. So you can do your increase and then seven single crochet. We have officially finished increasing our piece. While it will look a little wider once we add the single crochets, this is as wide as it's gonna get. And we should have a nice flat circle, because for the next part we're gonna start working out to make it round and more pill shaped. To do so, you're gonna do a single crochet in each of the stitches around. We're gonna be doing this for six rows. And you'll at the end of the six rows, you will start to see that it's starting to curve and that you can really start to see where the shape of the bee is coming from. It's also a little easier because there's no increases and you don't have to count. You're just going to do a single crochet in each one because your stitch amount should stay the same. Here it is after one round and you can see it's already starting to turn. So we're finishing up row number six of the single crochets. Now we get to do a color change to black. So I inserted my yarn into it and yarned over like the beginning of a normal single crochet. But instead of yarning over again with yellow, we're gonna do it with black. So you can place the black on the hook with a little bit of tail so it doesn't slide, and then pull all the way through. Now black is on top and that's gonna be the color that you're gonna start using. 
you can single crochet in the next stitch to kind of lock it into place and make sure it doesn't slide. Here we are finishing up the last, the first row of the black. And because this is a, we're working in a spiral, you're actually going to notice that if you continue using your stitch marker and using exactly your color change mark will start to go diagonal like a staircase and we don't want that so every time you finish a row you are going to add one stitch here it is after the second row of black that was our stitch marker so it's the end of our row but then we're gonna go one more because we want the color change to line up vertically this doesn't add to the yarn to the stitch count at all we're just going to continue around like normal but we just want to add that extra and you're going to continue this practice throughout the rest of the piece until we're just to yellow at the end now we're finishing up row four of the black and we're going to do another color change to yellow this is even a little easier because yellow is already attached So I inserted my hook, I yarned over, and I'm grabbing the yellow instead of the black and pulling through. As you can see, it's like a little tight but not too much, you don't want it to hurt the shape. It should rest pretty naturally into the stitch. And you're going to single crochet for six rows. We're doing here, we just finished, and we're going to do another color change to black. Remember, it's still attached. It makes it nice and easy. You're going to single crochet for four rows, adding your extra stitch to make sure that your color change is being nice and clean. All right, we're just finishing up black. You're going to color change back to yellow. And the best part about this one is that we get to cut the black yarn because we officially have two nice thick stripes. I like to do a stitch or two to make sure the yellow is really in place before I cut off the black. Make sure to leave a nice tail. We're not going to weave it in because it's in the middle, but we don't want it to come undone or slip out at any point. And he's going to throw it back and pretend it doesn't exist anymore. And then single crochet for six rows. It's starting to look like a bee. You see our nice clean color change and our nice stripes. We're going to start by sewing on the wings to make it truly look like a bee. I sew them in the middle yellow block so it's nice and in the middle. You're going to take your wing, put on your tapestry needle, and then insert that where you want it on the body. You see me lining it up and then going through the white again and then through the yellow. On the inside of the body you can pull it all the way through. There are a ton of different techniques of sewing on pieces. I find this to be, to be the easiest and cleanest but it doesn't matter how you do it as long as it doesn't come undone. Here I'm going in and out, in and out, from the top to the middle of the body making sure that my tail goes through the white wing and the body. I'm going back and forth a bit to make sure that my pieces are going to stay on nice and tight. Sometimes I choose to go back and forth so I will go through each one twice. Other times it's nice and tight by itself. It just depends on the placement of the piece. For this one, I'm going back and forth because I wanted to make sure it's extra tight because we don't want to be with a wing falling off. Once you're happy with the security of it, you can take that extra little tail, which is from the middle, 
put it on your tapestry needle and then put it in the middle as well. I do a slip knot, oh, excuse me, a square knot on the back just to make sure everything's nice and tight. It makes me feel a little better about my pieces coming undone, although it's not necessarily necessary. I also like to trim it just because it stays out of my way as I sew the next piece, but that's a personal preference. Now we're gonna sew on the second wing into the same place. Now for the fun part, the face. We're gonna take our black safety eyes and put it in the front. You might have to push a little bit from the back to kind of make a hole for the yarn to go through. That's one eye and here's two. I'm not putting the backs on yet because I want to make sure everything is lined up. All right, let's look at the front. Is it lined up? My eyes are a little off. So I want to move that guy to the side. You can put your eyes wherever you want it. I like them even based off the middle, but again, personal preference. I'm still not locking this piece into place yet because I like doing the smile and the blush around it to make sure everything still looks symmetrical at the end. Here I'm taking my little black bundle of yarn and putting it on my tapestry needle. From the back, you're gonna insert from one side of the mouth. I like it right in the middle. You're gonna pull through, but make sure you have a tail so it doesn't slide through on the other side. I leave a couple inches. There's extra black yarn, so don't worry about using it all. And then we're gonna go down on the other side of the mouth. This is gonna create a straight line. Now that we have the straight line, we're gonna go in from the back we're going to go stitch or two lower. This is where it's going to be the bottom of the mouth. Pull your needle all the way through, and then you're going to scoop the black line in the middle and pull it down so you're going back down in the same hole. And you can pull it nice and tight. This is going to create a little V. If you want it more round, just don't pull as tight. But I like the V look, so I pull a little tighter. Now we're going to add the blush. It's going to be very similar to the mouth. We're going to put some on the tapestry needle. Then we're going to start from the back and do two lines under each eye. Now I'm going to check to make sure everything's even before we put the backs on the eyes, because once we do that, we can't move the eyes anymore. These are the washers for the back of the eyes, the little gray tan pieces. We're going to go in the back, and we're going to make sure that the washer is going to be flat against it. Then I put fingers on both sides, and then you're going to push. You should hear a small clicking noise. Once it's on, it's not going to be able to come out. These are called safety eyes and they're extra precautions. Now they are nice and secure and they're not going to come out for anything. In the back, I like to do loose square knots for the pink and the black. Again, this is just to make sure it doesn't slide out for any reason. Don't make them too tight or, or it will ruin the design that you already made. Now 
Now we have finished adding all the accessories and the details to the bee, and then we're gonna get back to crocheting. We're gonna start decreasing down. To make a decrease, you're gonna insert, yarn over, and pull through so you have two loops. Then you're gonna go into the next stitch, insert, yarn over, and pull through so you have three. Then you're gonna pull through all three loops. If you need a written example, you can see the crochet guide for that. Then we're gonna single crochet seven stitches. This is so that we have an even decrease and it will match the front. Here you can see, we're gonna do another decrease. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. One decrease, seven single crochet. And then just like the increase, we're gonna do a decrease and then six single crochet. This is the pattern you're gonna continue with all the way down. Doing five single crochet, one decrease, one decrease, four single crochet. Here we are at two single crochet, one decrease, and we're gonna start stuffing. To do so, you're gonna take the stuffing and you're gonna pull it apart into small clumps. And you're gonna place it in. The small clumps help it helps it look fuller and it'll be more fluffy. You're gonna continue that till it's all the way full. There is some extra stuffing, which you can totally use. I don't like mine too full, but there is extra stuffing, so don't feel obligated to use it all. Here I am smoothing it around to make sure it's nice and smooth. We're gonna continue with our decreases until we have six stitches left. Cut the yarn and pull through, just like our wings. Now we're gonna use our tapestry needle and feed our tail in. And we're gonna be doing a cinch closure on the back of the bee. So you can go in and out of the remaining stitches. We did that three times, now we're gonna pull nice and tight so that it's shut. And then I like to add a simple knot right at the base of it. Again, this is all to make sure it doesn't come out. Not every step is necessary, but I wanna make sure my bee doesn't fall apart. Then you're gonna stick your needle in close to where the knot is, and you're gonna stick it through anywhere that is yellow. And you can take your scissors and you're going to cut right at the base. And I smooth it around again to make sure my tail isn't sticking out. And you have crocheted a bee! I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns.